What is going on everybody? Welcome to another viewer suggested video. If you're unfamiliar with what I've been doing, I've been asking you guys, the community, to provide me with topics that you would like to see videos on. I've been doing this for a while and I'm carrying it out until the end of the year at least. So what do we have today? Our suggestion today comes in from The Duelist. The Duelist is asking, do a video about the best things to watch or listen to while on a long grind. Now, for me, this is going to be the best things to watch. I don't listen to podcasts or anything like that. The only thing I actually just listen to is news radio on the way into work, on the way home from work. That's about it. But as for this video, I thought this was a really good topic to do, especially for those of you out there who are maxing. I relied heavily on Netflix while I was maxing to keep my mind from straying. I had to have something going on. I love background noise, so I watch a lot of stuff on Netflix. I have seen a ton of stuff. Like I could not, I cannot even fathom the amount of hours that I've spent watching and listening to Netflix series. So through this video, I'm gonna try to help you guys out, give you some suggestions on what you should watch for your AFK grinds. After you have watched this video, I possibly can't cover everything in this. So if you guys have stuff that you recommend watching, please leave it down below in a comment. I would love to check it out. I'm sure other people would also like to compile a list. Try to give what the title is of the show or movie and a little bit of a description about it so we know what we're getting into. As for me, I'm gonna be going through my top three favorite genres that I could find on Netflix, which is gonna be horror, fantasy, sci-fi, and anime animation. I do have a few other shows that I thought were good that I'm also gonna list off after we get through those three categories. First up, if you are a horror fan like I am, I think these five shows are actually really good and there's probably gonna be a couple in here that you have heard of. And if you haven't heard of them, I don't know what rock you have been living under. And if you haven't watched them, I applaud your self-control and ability to avoid the peer pressure. But first up, this one is pretty new. It just came out recently. It's gonna be Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. If you haven't watched this yet, I definitely suggest checking it out. It's actually a series that each episode is different. There are eight episodes currently out for this and they're all different. They're all pretty creepy. By far, episode eight, the last episode of the series was actually the creepiest for me, but it was really good. Guillermo del Toro is, uh, he's one of the contemporary masters of horror and he is a very good director and writer. If you have not seen any of his stuff, I definitely suggest you check it out if you are into the horror genre. I don't really wanna give any more away for this series because it was really good and I would like you guys to see it for yourself. Next up is Stranger Things. If you haven't heard of that, if you haven't seen it, I don't know what rock you've been living under, but Stranger Th Things is actually an incredible show. If you haven't seen it or you haven't watched the trailer, go check it out. It is definitely something to get into. The whole 1980s vibe with the Dungeons and Dragons premise is absolutely cool. Uh, the Duffer Brothers who direct and write this show done an amazing job with this show. Even the actors, the actresses, they're all good. The storyline is great. Uh, I, I haven't found a bad episode. I didn't see an episode that I was displeased with. So you definitely have to check out Stranger Things. Next up is going to be The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Now this is based on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. If you're old and a millennial like me, you might remember that show way back called Sabrina the Teenage Witch with Melissa Joan Hart. Now, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, way darker. This show is very dark, but it does have some comedic reference in it and a little bit of comedic relief, so it's really good. It's still kind of creepy at times. I wouldn't say it's true horror, but it does fall into that category. I would definitely suggest watching this if you like kind of, I guess, a little bit of comedy horror. But the show in and of itself is actually very good. The plot line is good. I believe there's four seasons of it and it kind of strays a little bit once you get into the fourth season, but I got through it and I still thought it ended up pretty good. The next one I would suggest watching if you like creepier zombie series is gonna be Black Summer. Black Summer I have watched and actually thought it was really good. I wouldn't really compare it that much to something like The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead always seemed to be the same thing over and over as the seasons got longer and farther along in season eight, nine and 10 with The Walking Dead, it kind of lost me. 
Uh, but Black Summer is pretty good. It's about a mother who is separated from her daughter and is pretty much trying to get her back, stopping at nothing to find this girl. And she's with other people throughout the show. And it goes through the summer of a zombie apocalypse. It's really not that bad. I think there's a couple seasons of it and it's based on Z Nation, if you've ever seen that. Uh, but definitely a good zombie show to watch. Um, it, unfortunately, there's only two seasons of it, but I still thought it was pretty good. Followed it all the way until it finished. I haven't actually looked in to see if there was going to be a season three. I don't know if it was canceled. Not sure. I still enjoyed it, though. Now, I would love to go on and on about things that I suggest, but I wanted to keep this short and give you guys some of my favorite stuff to watch. So I'm going to end the horror section on The Haunting of Bly Manor. Uh, this story tells about a young pair that is hired by a man to look after his niece and nephew at the family country house after they fall into his care. After arriving, they begin to see apparitions that proceed to haunt where they are staying. So there's actually a lot to this show, and this is another one I don't want to give a lot away on. It's a very good show and definitely worth the watch, especially if you're grinding through something like runecrafting. You don't have to pay a lot of attention to that, but you can pay a lot of attention to the show while you're watching it. I definitely think if you're a horror fan, you will definitely, definitely enjoy The Haunting of Bly Manor. So that's it for my horror suggestions. I want to move into fantasy and sci-fi now. Fantasy sci-fi is my favorite genre ever. Horror is a close second, but I love fantasy and sci-fi stuff. So the first one, this is another one if you haven't seen, obviously you've been under a rock. I'm going to suggest The Witcher to you. The first two seasons of The Witcher are absolutely incredible. If you didn't know, this is based on a video game. Uh, this series follows the story of Geralt of Rivia, who is a monster hunter. And he's kind of at odds trying to find his place in the world. And he finds out that people actually suck way more than the monsters and beasts. Henry Cavill plays Geralt of Rivia and he does an absolutely amazing job. I'm actually super sad that he's leaving the show after season three to resume his role as Superman. He's supposed to be replaced with Liam Hemsworth. Not really sure how that's going to work out, but I'm still going to watch it and see how it goes. We'll see if it keeps my attention. Next one is going to be Outlander. Outlander is a great show. Outlander is a show about a lady who can pretty much travel between times. She can go back in time, back into old Scotland, Scotland when there is like lots of war, lots of fathom, all of that stuff. But the show is very true to its time. So if you are easily grossed out, I probably wouldn't suggest this one to you. It is very... Uh, historically accurate when it comes to sexual assault and abuse. It's also kind of gory at times, very language ridden, but it is a very good show for anybody that likes sci-fi fantasy stuff. Um, fantasy, I actually wouldn't categorize it as fantasy. This one is strictly sci-fi, really sci-fi drama, but definitely a good show to watch. Next up is going to be one of my favorite shows of all time, and it's going to be Stargate SG-1. Now, the first episode of Stargate SG-1 premiered in 1999. All of the seasons are on Netflix. The whole show, I think, spanned 10 or 11 seasons. I can't even remember. I've watched it so many times. Uh, but Stargate is about a crew that finds this gateway, and they can actually travel to other worlds in the blink of an eye through a wormhole. So many different episodes, a lot of different things to cover. There is actually a movie that precedes the series that came out in 1994, uh, which I would suggest watching before you start the series, then you know exactly what you're getting into. Nonetheless, the original movie Stargate was really good. Stargate SG-1, absolutely great series. There are follow-up series, which are Stargate Atlantis, which is not bad, and Stargate Universe, kind of bad. Stargate Universe only lasted two seasons before it was shelved. Uh, but definitely suggest watching Stargate SG-1. My next suggestion for fantasy sci-fi is going to be Warrior Nun. Now, I personally didn't really think that I was going to get into this, but I'm willing to get through a few episodes of anything to see if it does grab me. So this is about a girl that is an orphan teenager. She wakes up in, in a morgue and then discovers that she has superpowers. Uh, she is the chosen halo bearer for a secret sect of demon hunting nuns. It's actually pretty cool. The sci-fi aspect of it is really well done. The series started in 2020 and is still going. Not really sure if it's been renewed for a new season yet, but I would definitely suggest watching it if you like sci-fi and a little bit of demon hunting. 
My last suggestion for the fantasy sci-fi category is going to be The Magicians. The Magicians is a really good show that is actually based on a trilogy of books. If you haven't read the books and you like to read, definitely suggest reading those. There is a little bit left out of the show that is covered in the books. Not going to spoil it. So if you're a reader, head over to Amazon Kindle, grab those. I read on my Kindle all the time. Uh, I love that thing. I actually saw that this came out as a show and it was based on a book. So I had to go get the books. Check them out. Pretty good. As for the show, uh, this guy, Quentin Coldwater, enrolls at a university for magic people. Uh, he wants to be trained as a magician where he discovers that the magical world is actually real and poses a danger to humanity as a whole. So pretty much the premise of the show is him trying to figure out how he can save everyone using magic. Really good show, really good books. Definitely suggest checking this out. The last category that I'm going to get into is going to be anime and animation. All of these shows that I'm listing are absolutely incredible. I am blown away by all of them. The animation, the characters, the plot lines of them. Super cool shows. The first one is going to be Arcane. Now, even if you don't play League of Legends, you can still watch Arcane because it kind of starts at the beginning of a story. You don't really have to know anything about the characters. Obviously, it certainly does help if you do, but I've been playing League of Legends for like 10 or 11 years now. Um, Arcane was really well done, and the animation style of the show is just top notch. It's not your typical cartoony or anime e animation but the animation is unique the characters are awesome because they are completely based off of the league of legends lore if you haven't seen arcane even if you don't play league check it out next one is going to be an anime and this is going to be seven deadly sins this one was actually really good i didn't expect it to be good but for an anime on netflix it's pretty damn good uh, basically the show it's got its uh, perverted comedy in it as you would expect from an anime but it also has a good balance of seriousness and action the main character's name is meliotis and the sub main character i guess you could say his kind of girlfriend is elizabeth and it takes place all seven members of the deadly sins team all have different abilities and it puts a little bit of spin on historical stories that you would definitely recognize if you watch the show. Definitely check it out. Next one is going to be Sword Art Online. Now, I get a lot of flack for this. Sword Art Online is one of my favorite animes because you can better believe if you have never seen this and uh, it, once you find out what is going on in the show, there's something called a nerve gear. And if you do watch the show... Oh, man, I would put that thing on in a heartbeat and be locked in that game, no problem. I'd be playing forever, but it is super cool as a premise. Basically, it is a show about something called a full dive technology virtual reality system. You put it on your head, it takes over all your senses, and you are transported into a virtual reality world where you play games, combat, all of that good stuff. Uh, as for the show itself, there's always something going on. There's always some antagonist that's trying to take it down or use the nerve gear for their own benefit. Really good show. The only thing I will say is getting through the second half of season one is a little tough. It was kind of bland and boring and it looked like it kind of looked like they were grabbing at straws. But after that season, it really comes back and grabs you in. So if you can get through the first half of the first season, absolutely incredible anime. Second half of the first season, eh. After that, all the way to the end, which there is a new season coming soon, uh, definitely suggest it. Check it out and just struggle through the second half of season one. I promise you won't be disappointed after that. Next one is going to be Love Death Robots. Love Death Robots is actually really cool. Uh, this is comprised of a bunch of different episodes through each season. None of them really have anything to do with each other that I could find, but they're all different stories. Some of them do continue in other seasons. Uh, but for the main part of the seasons, they're all really different. And each episode really has a different animation style, which is really cool. Uh, it can be a little bit gory and a little bit vulgar at times, but it's a really good show and it's really cool. Definitely suggest checking this one out as well. The last series that I'm going to mention for the anime animation section is going to be Castlevania. Uh, this is about a vampire hunter that fights to save a city from an army of otherworldly beasts and they are controlled by Dracula the Vampire himself. Uh, this is a really good anime. They did an incredible job adapting this anime. 
Uh, it's based on the classic video games, Castlevania. I remember playing the old Castlevania games on my original Game Boy. Uh, not the Game Boy Color, the one before that. It was just like black and white, literal, literal original Game Boy. Uh, but as for the adaptation, pretty good. Definitely follows the storyline of the video games almost to a T. Definitely suggest this one. So I do have seven more shows that I want to mention here. I didn't want to put them in the other sections because they weren't my favorite, but I still found them good enough to watch all the way to the end. Now, this one is uh, newer. It's just called Blockbuster. And some of you Gen Z or Gen Alpha or whatever, you might have any know what a Blockbuster is. And I actually met somebody that was like 14, a, f a child of a friend of mine and didn't know what Blockbuster was. So that made me feel especially old. Um, I'm only 32, but this kid was like, what's a Blockbuster? And I was like, oh God, this is it. It's the end. But anyways, Blockbuster is a pretty cool show. It's comedy and it's basically about the team that is trying to keep the very last Blockbuster in existence alive. It's pretty funny, you should check it out. Uh, the next one is called Dahmer. And uh, this one, it was good, but it's not really, factual based on the actual story of Dahmer. If you go through and watch some of the actual documentaries about Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, the show didn't really follow everything like it should, but nonetheless, it was still a pretty good show. So if you thoroughly want to be creeped out uh, about a serial killer, definitely check this one out. Next up is going to be The 100. The 100 is a pretty good show. Definitely falls into the fantasy sci-fi category. It's about a bunch of kids. Uh, they get sent down to a planet to check it out and see if it is safe or not. Uh, pretty much all of humanity had to escape Earth because it was just a shit show and everything went to hell. Uh, but this one spans about seven seasons. It gets a little slower in the later seasons, but still worth finishing out. Next up is going to be Fate the Wink Saga. This was actually a kid's show that they adapted into a darker show. It's about fairies and elves and pretty much magical stuff but it does get pretty dark and violent uh, so if you are interested in dark violent fairies definitely the show for you uh next is going to be the outer banks uh the outer banks was really good actually it follows a group of kids that are kind of on a treasure hunt down in the outer banks which is in uh, north carolina and it was a good show Season two got a little bit of some bad reviews, but I still found it pretty good. Uh, critics kind of suck. Uh, definitely check this one out if you're into more or less, I guess you could say real life drama, because that is what this falls under. Next one is going to be Manifest. Manifest is a supernatural TV show, and it centers on the passengers and crew of a commercial airliner who suddenly reappear after being presumed dead for five and a half years. So. I personally love time travel stuff. That is awesome for me. Uh, definitely check this one out. I would say this one, if I had to give it a star count out of 10, I would say it's probably a solid six and a half to seven. Uh, nonetheless, it's still good enough for you while you're AFKing RuneScape skills. And the last one, which reminded me of a Nickelodeon show when I was a kid, is going to be The Midnight Club. Uh, this is some terminally ill young adults who form the Midnight Club, and they meet up every night to tell scary stories. If you remember back in the day on Nickelodeon, you might have seen uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which was an awesome show, especially for kids at the time. Uh, this one is a little bit darker, but nonetheless, it kind of is basically like that Nickelodeon show. Definitely worth the watch. So that's it guys, I've given you a small description and synopsis of 22 different series that you can find all on Netflix. I enjoyed every single one that I have listed off here and I hope that you might too. Remember, if you have something that you have watched and you think is worth mentioning, leave it down in the comment section below because if I haven't seen it, I definitely want to. Like I said, I spent a lot of time on Netflix and I love watching all of these shows. So please let me know what you got, what is good, I want to watch it. So as always guys, thanks for suggesting videos for this series. I love seeing what you guys wanna see and even better, I love making them into videos uh, so you guys can get what you're asking for. Thank you for watching. If you have a suggestion for the next one, check out my community page. I always post on there asking for topics for the next video. I will see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.